quick. The whole point of my talk show is to show you that even with having a word of disability, I can style them out to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be to prove them. Stem out to something. Hey, it's Tony Daniels. Uh, I was just interviewed by Keith Andrew. He's a cool dude. I really like him. And I think it's a cool thing for you to do if you're interested. But also, if you're a watcher, a listener, you know, comment and subscribe and do all that stuff down below. So please do it. And uh, I'm just glad to be a part of it. Have fun. It's me, David Zan. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Key Energy Network. Today, as you heard from the recommendation, our guest is best known for being an actor, and the producer. Some of the work that you actually worked on was Spidey and his amazing friends. I actually like Spider-Man and amazing friends, but I'm an 80s person. <laughs> you were also in Gotham Knight, and you were also in Transformers Battleground, a name of you. Yep, and uh, a whole bunch more. I mean, we're talking uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, animation and video games and thousands of episodes so it's uh, it's fun <laughs> no absolutely and actually while i'm looking at the west i might as well go down it definitely so the first one i want to ask you is gotham knight you know what was it like and spoiler for people who don't who hadn't played it there was no batman because batman died in the previous story but it, just the fact that dick grayson batgirl and the bat families keeping the legacy I think that's yeah, a good, really good storyline. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But um, my thing was, you know, like a lot of times I'll, I'll get stuff. Um, uh, God, you know, you end up doing it and they go, listen, uh, don't uh, don't tell anybody what you're doing. And you go, I don't know, because they, they give you a fake name when you're doing it. Right. So actually, when I was working on it, it was, it was called something else. And then the characters I were doing on, on this video, video game, they were just... Um, uh, sort of non I don't know the word they, they were uh, not too crazy there were a couple of funny characters I did but because uh, I did I think two or three it's hard Keith the, the stuff just runs into itself <laughs> <laughs> you no know, it's kind of like uh, for an example they actually did a new Dragon Ball game it's called Dragon Ball Breaker and you don't play it's Goku of Vegeta, there's probably cheat codes or DLCs, but you get to play as Bulma, that's really cool, and you get to play as Uwan, I don't know why you want to play as a pig, but that's, that's kind of stupid. Uh, but just the fact you get to play as Bulma and go on missions, I mean, it's different, but when you think of a Dragon Ball game, you think of playing as Goku, Vegeta, and Bardock, and all the others, but and you know, it gives you a reason to play as Bulma, you know, so that's a good thing right there. Yeah, Plus, I, do, I never worked on Dragon Ball myself, but um, not that I remember. <laughs> but I did work on uh, Beyblade, uh, a couple of iterations of Beyblade and uh, uh, Pokemon. Uh, I played a couple of characters on there. One guy was named Kenta, and I remember he was blonde and he had glasses and, and a funny voice, um, which was really cool. And then, uh, you know, um, as you know, Sailor Moon, I did hundreds of voices on Sailor Moon. And uh, uh, I kind of like the anime. It's fun. And in fact, I have a friend of mine. We just uh, worked together on Wednesday night. He's moving back to Japan tomorrow. Well, actually, yeah, technically tomorrow. Uh, and he says, you got to come and spend a few days. He's, a, he's actually a really famous, wonderful actor that I met through another actor friend. And um, I was a big fan because he's, he's been in a couple of movies like Train Spotting and Snatch and Wonder Woman. And uh, he's just just incredible. So he, he said, uh, why don't you come for a visit to Japan? And I said, you know, uh, in his Scottish accent. And I said, I'd love to because, uh, um, you know, as you know, a lot of uh, anime actors are huge in Japan because, you know, the Japanese just love voice. I don't know what it is, you know, I don't, and I never really call myself, I'm an actor who just happens to be good at voice, I don't really call myself a voice actor. But, 
but that's what people say it is. But. No, I'm going to ask you because this one I was watching earlier, and I know it's not cater. I'm not saying I'm old or anything. I know I'm only 34. You got one foot in the grave and the other's on the left stone. I don't know. I'll come back in 30 years when I'm 60. <laughs> but uh, the reason I bring it up is every time I see this name Spidey, and I'm, I'm looking down at the phone, by the way. Yeah, what, that's cool. So I'm looking at the name Spidey and some amazing friends, and I, I saw it. I got so excited. I'm like, Finally, they brought back Spider-Man and his amazing friends, <laughs> and then I, I saw it, it was like Gwen Stacy as um, Spider wa Spider Woman, Spider Girl, whatever, and then you have uh, Meyer and the other one, and I'm like, okay, you know, the girl Spider, okay, that's really interesting. The other guy sucks. <laughs> but then, I don't know. Oh, go ahead. No, I, I, I don't know who the other guy is. Oh, Myrus, uh, Myrus Morales. Okay. Uh, it, he's pretty much a black Spider-Man. Oh, okay, yeah. No, I, um... Uh, what am I playing on there? I'm playing... I'm playing Trey. Uh, which, I haven't even seen it yet, to be honest. My, my friend's kid watches it, my, my godson, and he just loves it. He's like, runs around the house wearing the outfits, and... It, it's really fun. I'll get to see him at some point uh, in the next little bit. But yeah, uh, yeah it's kind of cool. Um, you know, my friend Tony Pastor, who's like my best uh, best buddy, we worked on the Avengers, Diabolique, um, all the Stanley stuff. I was working with him in LA with Stanley. He brought me down, and um, Stan used to call me Krog. Hey, Krog, come over here. <laughs> because I played a character named Krog in one of his episodes. It was a big blue monster that spoke like this. And I'd actually put these little candies in my mouth and it would go kink, 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 and make this really weird sound, right? And um, anyway, so my best buddy is Tony Pastor, and he, we lost him because of uh, uh, complications with COVID and stuff. But, um, but he was the one that directed, I tried to get on there, and he was the one that directed that, uh, that really dark Spider Man in the 90s. That was, that was heavy. So, oh, you mean the uh, 1994, right? The anime series? Yeah. That was the best one. Yeah. He was... Um, the, it was really dark, right? Uh, what was that actually called? Spider-Man the animated series? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. I don't know. Probably, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, yeah, it was pretty heavy. I, I, I kind of like, wow. I really wanted to get on there because... You know, you don't get to use, you know, a lot of cartoon stuff, you you, uh, you get to use your comedy chops, but I like doing the, the serious stuff because a lot of times I'll end up doing, uh, you know, for film and stuff, I'll end up doing uh, ADR, knock on wood, uh, and I end up doing it as, uh, you know, serious acting stuff and replacing other actors with serious voices. I've replaced voices for Sean Connery, Al Pacino, uh, you, you know, you name it, I've probably done their voice on a film and TV show. Well, you bring up two good points. I want to talk to you about Stan away. But you said doing their voices. But when someone passes away and they're known for being this iconic character, do sure. you think it's time to retire that character? For an example, I'm talking about... Well, John Jonathan Winters, for instance, on... Um, uh, uh, they brought me and John Biner in to replace John. Jonathan Winters had passed away during the making of uh, Smurf 2. And so I became Papa Smurf. And then for the last part of the movie, you could really hear John Winters' um, voice was really deteriorating. And so they brought in uh, John Biner to finish it. So he had like the last, you know, dozen lines at the first 60 or whatever we do. We redid most of his lines because it was really hard. I felt bad. Um, you know, they kept a lot of the stuff in for, for him that they could, but stuff that was rewritten or whatever, they couldn't you know, They couldn't piece together words and make it work. So I ended up redoing it. And uh, no, I, I kind of like that. I mean, that's that's kind of what I, I can do, you know. Um, uh, I think I've done over you know, 600 celebrities at least replacing their voice and things. And, and I think it's just beautiful. I mean... Uh, when they can get a voice match on somebody, and and I look at it this way, I, I'm when big name actors do animation, um, I don't mind it if it's a Sylvester Sylvester Stallone or a, 
or Schwarzenegger, you know, come on, Keith, get to the chopper, you know, the real deal, not the fake stuff. And I don't mind that because that's their voice and it's unique, you know. But when it's like, you know, Bob, what's his face? Because he's got like a million followers on Instagram and they put him in a cartoon, but he can't act. It's just, like, it's just horrible. That's that's the only thing that bothers me. I don't I, I don't I know what you're saying about retiring a voice or whatever, but um, I, I, I think sometimes you can pay homage to the person and, um, you know, that's what. That's what we do as actors. I'm specific to that. Well, let me ask you this. Can you do an homage to Kevin Conroy? Because he will always be Batman in the, in the animated series world. But could uh, you fill in for him? Uh, let's see. I don't know if I've done his voice. I've done uh, I've done the other Kevin, Kevin Conway. What a beautiful actor he was. I know, I can't believe uh, Kevin Conroy passed. Uh, and I never got to work with him, but you just see. Uh, let's see if we can hear his voice. And you said you oh, also did. Very... Well, that's not him. <laughs> that's not him. <laughs> uh, let's see, I'm trying to find one so I can do it. Uh, let's see. Can we have any samples of him? It's like a wise man once said battle like not with monsters, lest you become monster. Battle not with monsters, lest you become monster. So give Welcome me, to give me five minutes and I'll have it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here he is in a, a. Although we know that. Let's see, this is crazy. On Roy's beer. Or succumb to mind control. Yes, it's Bob. Or succumb to mind control. Yes. So yeah, probably. Give me ten minutes, it'll be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. Now, I want to ask you to do do's and don'ts because you are a producer. So, the first question I want to ask you is what experience do you have in making videos? Oh, tons. I started when I was, uh, I'm going to freak you out. Um, how I started in the business was I was a musician at 11 years old playing professionally. And a guy came in and he goes, Hey, and I had a deep voice at the time too. He says, I want you on my radio show. So I brought my guitar and I played on this radio show and I fell in love with radio. And then I got a job at uh, uh, one of the first cable companies and um, as a producer and uh, editor. And, uh, but it was a t the first thing was a TV series. And it was uh, back then they had slow cam. So in other words, you'd, you'd be talking and you'd hear the guy talking and you'd just see the face move, right? And um, then they allowed us to do uh, live. So I had live camera. I was playing records and... Uh, my friend's father was the head of uh, Columbia Records. So he goes, hey kid, come and see me. So I go down and see him, he goes, here, give me a whole bunch of records. And I talk to other record companies because you know, they all know each other. And it's like, yeah, come and get some records. And I spin records, especially the weird stuff because I loved spinning stuff that nobody else was doing. Top 40 was doing their thing. I'm gonna spin weird stuff, five and six track deeps, deep. Like years later, I got a, I got a record from my buddy and it was uh, uh, The Clash. London Calling, and I found a track on there, and you'll see it on the old version. It's not listed. The, the very last track on side B uh, was Train in Vain. Ding, 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 ding. And I'm like, I gotta play the song because I don't know what it is. It's not listed. I'm gonna play it. It could have been, they could have been swear I would have been fired. I put it on. People went nuts. They were like lighting up the phones and everything. So, uh, yeah. So I ended up doing that, and then, um, and then my boss said, hey, you wanna produce some, uh, uh, you're really good at editing too. Oh my god! Uh, so I, technically, I was the first guy to play uh, rock videos because my friend's father calls. Yeah, hey, I've got these videos, and, I, and he says, uh, you know, you have to edit out all this stuff. So I brought him in. I edited them. And I played videos on the air for the first time for long before there was a uh, uh, an MTV or, or anything else. Uh, we were talking years before, and so uh, so I started producing uh, a couple of comedy shows and. And in rock videos, and I started directing, and it was uh, it was cool. I, I really enjoyed it. But uh, um, I got a job at a, a radio station, and uh, and that was it. They, you know, and, I, and this guy came up and he says, "Hey, uh, I got to do a commercial on Monday as Elvis." I was like 16, 17. And I go, "All right, fine, I'll I'll do your Elvis for you." And that was it. Have you seen uh, have you, Keith? Have you ever seen Erie, Indiana, The Other Dimension? No, I never. I, oh I will actually oh. well look it up, but <laughs> yeah, you got to look that up because I played Big Fat Elvis on camera. <laughs> well, I gained like 
I don't know. Well, by the time we finished shooting, I gained like 88 pounds, I swear to God, because they wanted the fat Elvis and they didn't want to use a fat suit. And I'm like, oh God. Because I thought, oh, De Niro could lose the weight, I'll do it. Nah, never happens. Anyways, I, I finally lost a lot of it, but not everything. I, I could I could stand to lose another 40 pounds, trust <laughs> me. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so then uh, he, uh, following week he'd hit me up, I need this character. And, he, and I started learning all these voices, right? And, um, and in between all that, I had met a teacher who uh, said, you have a deep voice, maybe you should do something uh, so you can do other characters, right? And so I said, like, what? And it's like, study opera with me. I'm like, okay. So I studied opera and it allowed me to uh, get, you know, really high without losing the bottom end. So it was amazing. And it's about stretching your vocals out, um, you know, the chords and everything else and allowing the, the lungs to fill the proper way. And I have a 50 inch chest, so it's like, you know, if I lose another 60 pounds, I look weird because I look, <laughs> the body's really skinny, but the chest is gigantic. So I look like I've been in some major uh, farming accident. But anyway, <laughs> so I like to, um, I, I like to experiment with uh, the vocals because it, it's, it's to me, uh, whether you're acting or whatever, it's all art and it's all for me musical and it all intertwines. You know? Has anyone ever told you you sound a little bit like Jeff Goldblum? Uh, I've never heard that. Um, I guess <laughs> I, I guess I could. <laughs> yeah, no, I've never done his voice, but yeah, yeah, I could probably say the tonality is in the same, same area. I mean, I used to have people all the time. Can, can you do um, like that guy, you know, from the radio station? Oh, I need to. Uh, I, on Monday, I need you to do. Uh, uh, Christopher Walken, I'm like walking over the guys the, over the weekend and watching walking movies, you know, Keith, you got issues with that wrestling belt behind you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's kind of cool, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I wish I was able to do that, but I don't know, maybe one day, hey, I think I found what I'm good at, but take it one step at a time. Well, you have a unique voice too. It's pretty cool. Um, you have some really cool mid tones and stuff. And uh, you know, um, as a as an actor who wants to do voice, you could uh, you could easily find a place. I always tell people starting out, if you want to be a, a really good actor, is take improv because I mean, I grew up with uh, Colin Mockery and all the guys, and um, and some pretty amazing people out out of Toronto. Um, all Second City. I did Second City for years and. Um, you really learn how to take the comedy that's not existing on the paper that somebody has written and add it in. And as long as they're not being a, a weenie, you can, you know, you can make their product better. And if they're smart, they'll go, yeah, do it. You know, um, I was working on a film a couple of years ago here in New York and, uh, oh, my agent, it's funny. You said my agent just sent me really something funny. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> um, I gotta do, let's see, Steve McQueen, Paul Newman, Hugh Hefner. Oh, jeez. Anyway, um, I'll figure it out later. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, where was I? Come on, Keith, help me out here. Uh, oh, you were talking about for people who want to follow in your footsteps. Right, yeah, sorry. Um, someday, see what happens when you have your head in the clouds. Um, if, uh, if, if you take the improv classes, I think that, that builds your stature. Then, if you need to take uh, acting classes, find a really good acting teacher in your area and, and take a few classes or more, but take a few and just get the feel for it so you can work with other people. Um, because m my friend Tony Pastor always said, uh, acting is reacting. That's it. It's like, you know, um, you, you could be an on camera actor right now and just learn how to react. And, and you know, I'm sure you got to learn your lines and memorize them. That's, that's the part I. But it's funny to mention that because um, I interviewed this one guy who was actually my first interview. He actually, well, officially on video, first interview, <laughs> he said uh, he worked with Chucky Chan, and Chucky Chan does not read a script. He does improvs. Yeah. Um, in fact, um, by the way, he's one of the nicest guys in the world. I, I got to be Jackie Chan <laughs> in... Uh, do, you remember, do you guys remember... Uh, um, uh, 
for the uh, celebrity death match that was on yes <laughs> yeah so i was jackie chan in that and uh it was kind of neat you know it's, it's nice being able to do stuff like that and and, and really uh represent the person that you're doing an impression of because it's it's cool it's you know you're not as long as you're not doing it to hurt anybody you know that's why i disagree with with even with um you know uh with one of my heroes you know hank azaria for um you know saying i don't i'm not going to do a poo anymore but i mean if, if if the writing is really rude and nasty and, and hurting people yeah no i mean but we're actors that's what we're supposed to do we're supposed to become other people you know and part of my thing is being able to do stuff because you know when you do your 23 and me and you find out you're like i'm this i'm this i'm this i'm this oh my god i'm like no wonder i can do all these accents because i've got all this stuff in my blood and and i think you know and if you understand it not just having the blood but if you understand um how things are formed you know like uh, uh let's say you asked me to uh, uh like i had a director say can you do a, a, a British accent I go yeah which one do you want what do you mean which one I said London alone has like 12 accents what I'm serious it's like uh, well can you do London sure I can do London depends what part if you want like an Oxfordian or a Surrey accent it's like that right if you go for Cockney you go for like a Jason Statham right there you know you're like an extender right if you come up to Manchester you're right here Keith it's a fantastic way right and then there's my family in Newcastle. Brian Johnson from ACDC sounds exactly like this, and my mother is born in Scotland. So she's got a Scottish accent, but actually the grandparents are Irish. It also depends, like, just outside of Dublin and stuff like that. And you can really put it up and be going, no, right? So, so, yeah, I mean, it just, I don't know, it's just a natural thing. I, 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 I find that some of these people doing uh, those, I can do 25 accents. Uh, and, I go, that's really cool, you know, they can do all these accents and stuff. And then they say, well, how many can you do? And I go, oh, that's not the question. It's how many I can't do, because there's not that many. And then uh, I used to laugh, I had these guys who were, um, one of my best friends is, uh, have you ever seen Napoleon Dynamite? I wasn't a big fan, but I saw it. Yeah, so you know, um, Ellen Dubin plays the mother that buys all the Tupperware of Uncle Rico, John Grease, who's in White Lotus, by the way, I love John. And he's a nice, nice guy. Um, so Ellen, um, we're working on a, a, a video game and we leave the studio and my friend uh, was running the studio he goes, Hey, um, uh, Ellen goes, I want to take you guys out for, for dinner. Cause you know, we're having a good time. We're really good friends. So we go to this restaurant and this, uh, Sri Lankan guy who, who is the major D, um, used to work at another restaurant that I used to go to and he's like, Oh, it is you. And I'm like, Oh, and he says, can you do that thing for my guys? Right, he had a, a whole bunch of. He says, "We'll stay open for you guys. We'll cook. Don't worry." But if if you do that thing, and she goes, "What thing?" And he goes, "Watch this." I okay, guess so. I did. Uh, I don't know, like two hundred accents all around the world, uh, like you know, fifty American accents, and they were just freaking out. They were like, "Oh my God, how do you do that?" And I go, "Yeah, it's in the blood." You know. So there you go. No, yeah, absolutely. And now for people with disabilities who want to follow in your footsteps, have you ever worked with people, besides me obviously, have you worked with people with disabilities? Yeah, um, what's really cool is, um, yeah, I have lots, it's, it's uh, interesting, I mean, on the musical side, it's, it's, uh, um, it's, it's interesting because I get to meet a lot of different people, um, and then we have people on the spectrum who I, I deal with uh, that I, uh, I, I really, I really love because you, you reach, and I, I'm even, even under disabilities, I would put people with Alzheimer's and with music and with voices and doing funny stuff, you actually reach through some of those barriers and, t and touch the soul and the brain. And it feels really wonderful to, uh, to be able to, like I, I had a friend, I can't tell you his name because I, I, I don't think, but he, he's passed on since, but he was a very famous guy and he was in a home and my friend Dominic Kian as the uncle junior from the Sopranos uh, I played guitar with him for at least seven years and we go every Sunday and we go to this home and we play for the people and we'd reach through to some of the the people with hardcore dementia and they'd wake up from all these old songs we'd play and I had a guy who couldn't speak it had a stroke five years ago and wow I'm going to say he passed away last year but the year before um, he hadn't spoken in five years and he could only make these little noises and he turned to his wife and says what's his name and she goes oh my god you talked I know 
that's Tony. He called me over. He goes, Tony, would you play me a song? And I'm like, I start crying. It was like, and my friend Dominic's crying because this guy had talked in five years. And it was, the music got through. So yeah, and then I've worked with um, uh, a couple of blind children um, through the Dreams Take Flight, which is kind of like a Make-A-Wish Foundation sort of thing. And got to work with them and, um, uh, and do that sort of thing. One of my best buddies is really close to St uh, Stevie Wonder. And I got to meet Stevie. And, uh, you know, and I look at people like Stevie and they go, man, you are, you are such a... Uh, inspiration you know that you can do what you do and then I've got another friend uh, we, 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 um, who he's passed on but Jeff Jeff Healy was uh, was uh, blind and uh, just another amazing guy who looked past his disability you know and uh, I've got a, a guy that lives in the, the building where I am here and or was living he moved out but um, he's blind he plays guitar and he's wonderful and it's just you know you try and um, not think about what their disability is but what your capability is to bridge the two and try and, and bring it forward no absolutely you know as long as you have the heart and passion this whole world really matters and it gets you through anything yeah exactly and and you know and and, and i don't that i try not to think of a disability because i don't think it is a disability i think you know all we have are blocks that we can overcome and if we can work together we can all get through you know and i think that's wonderful no i agree that's well only slightly <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing you have to have fun at what you do because it, it and once it becomes a job you gotta hate it and you gotta have build up posterity if you don't have that type of mentality and say i'm just gonna do it have fun do it for shits and giggles and as long as you're enjoying yourself, you will enjoy it for the rest of your life. As soon as you start, you know, trying to hold yourself to a higher standard, you're setting yourself up for failure. Exactly. I mean, it's, uh, you know, do what you love if you can. I mean, sometimes you have to do stuff you don't love to be able to do stuff you love. Um, when I was a kid, I worked, uh, you know, like I said, I worked in television and I worked in radio. But on the, the lean years, you know, I ended up, um, for years I worked for a phone company because I had a electronics engineering background. Uh, my mother made, made me go to school for electronics. <laughs> but she's like, you know, you have to have something to fall back on. And um, I never kind of believed in that, but I did that out of respect for her. And uh, I got an electronics background and I was able to get a job like that. But I hated it, you know. Um, and trust me, you know, you don't poo-poo anything anybody does because I'm, um, you know, people have to live. It's I had a friend of mine who was embarrassed to work with me on a, on a show. It's like, well, I'm going to go to my regular job. And I go, yes, yeah, so what? Pocket the money, pay your rent so you can do more of this. Really? Yeah. And no matter what you do out there, um, don't think, you know, if you have to get a job at whatever, Home Depot or whatever, you know, just to make ends meet, you go do it just to survive. And not just survive, you'll be able to surpass stuff as long as you're not falling behind on, on rent and pay and all this stuff. And and at some point, you know, if, you, if it's meant to click, it will. And, and, you know, if you have a good faith and uh, and keep that in your heart, I think it will click and you'll, you'll make it. No, yeah, absolutely. Now we're going overtime. I do have a couple questions for you off the air. But okay. wrapping up. If Let's wrap up. <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, and all oh, social media. If you're especially watching, you have to leave a comment because I would love to interact with you. Our guests would love to interact with you. But until Just we leave meet a comment. again, yeah. <laughs> until we meet again, it was a real honor and privilege, and I catch you later. Thank you. You're have awesome, a good night friend. and a happy holidays.